happy to be here at Open Source Reunion. And um, just it's such a fabulous conference that I always feel torn between the different sessions because I end up missing a few when I'm doing a talk or you know just catching up on one versus the other. So very pleased to be here again. And uh, uh, in my past life, I've uh, represented Wikipedia and still continue to you know be a Wikipedian. Um, but I'm uh, heading internationalization and NLP and localization engineering at Twitter. So um, really want to talk about how Twitter is approaching the, problem, the problems of internationalization and challenges at scale. And uh, as we become more and more global in this world of the internet, uh, kind of discussing some of the areas that um, face all the major platforms, if you will, on the web and you know going into mobile. So I, what I'd like to do is briefly highlight some of the areas in terms of the uh, the breadth of the problem, if you will, and then also have a good discussion around some of the issues and challenges and opportunities that you see in internationalization at large and uh, making the platform enabled on web and mobile to be more accessible and language friendly across the planet. Right, so as you all know, uh, I'm sure all of you use Twitter in some way or the other. Is there anybody who doesn't use Twitter? Yes, everybody does. So this is cool. And it's just, you know, one of those things where um, Twitter has always been a phenomenon, I think, um, of um, kind of being the heartbeat or the pulse, if you will, of many conversations, especially uh, news events, uh, opinions, uh, discussions happening on the latest trends, um, and in many different languages. And, and Twitter, uh, amazingly enough, has been an open platform for so many years where the conversations that people are having or the information that they're so, uh, you know, uh, talking about or sharing is available and um, <clears throat> also nowadays indexed by Google uh, in the search uh, uh, results, if you will, uh, according to the conversations that are going on. So it's very, very interesting to kind of see where Twitter is evolving to and as it expands in terms of the reach and the usage by different folks across the planet. Look at um, <clears throat> language support, which is very, very fundamental to access. So, I um, was on Twitter in the morning today, and uh, amazingly, one of my friends from Ghana, she's an uh, activist on, uh, digit on the digital divide and uh, works on the internet um, um, IEF uh, forums and IETF, and uh, she was tweeting <coughs> about some of the major areas which um, really, really enable access and uh, help bridge the digital divide, and as you can see, it was very uh, appropriate um, that language is one of the areas which is really, really something that is key in being able to really say that we are globally connected or we are globally co conversant with each other uh, and maintaining an internationalized and open platform. So I take that spirit uh, to heart very much. I care about uh, you know, some of these areas which are so integrated and interconnected uh, to being able to provide access to everybody on the planet for all the platforms that we take for granted. Right, so um, one of the things that you may have noticed is that Twitter speaks many languages, right? And, um, you know, having been a primarily an English user initially, myself, as well as then kind of looking and tweeting in other languages that I am uh, conversant in, I started uh, seeing over time that uh, you know, many of the tweets, whether folks are tweeting in Japanese or in Hindi or in Arabic or in Malayalam or in Persian or you know, in German, people tend to use languages interchangeably, right? And even in a tweet, which is just 140 characters, you'd be amazed at the usage of multi-language in, in that you know, 140 characters. So we kind of say, okay, we are just going to do a tweet, which is going to be a sentence, perhaps, or a paragraph, you know, and a hashtag, perhaps, for you know, a topic that I'm interested in, and a link, right? I mean, that's kind of the constitution of a simple tweet. But 
You'll also see, if you notice more carefully, that many, many times Arabic is intertwined with English, or you know, Hebrew is intertwined with German, or uh, Malayalam is intertwined with Hindi. You know, I mean, there are so many different combinations that you are seeing in the composition of a tweet, which from a language processing perspective makes that challenge even more interesting, right? Because you take for granted that, hey, somebody you know, who is just tweeting can use all these different languages and talk about them, but it's quite complex. And as we add multimedia, we add media, we add audio, we add video, we add uh, different kinds of photographs, how do you use language tags, right? How do you actually use and search on them? So one of the interesting things that I just took as a snapshot here is many of the major languages, if you will, which is just a snapshot of the millions of speakers in each language. And um, you'll see that much of the, most of these languages are actually used and on Twitter <coughs> and um, on Wikipedia also, of course. But you will also see that you know, they're all multi-languages in terms of how they're mixed up, right? So <coughs> in the millions of users, you, you'll see these are some of the top languages. And uh, they also kind of reflect the same on you know, ma major platforms on the web. <coughs> so one of the other areas that I feel, which is very, very compelling in terms of you know, why people access uh, the web and also use something like Twitter, is that there is content in that language. right? That is, if I'm familiar with Hindi, or I'm familiar with Nepali, or I'm familiar with English, or with German, I want to see content that's interesting for me from sources that are local you know, to that language, or people who are actually speaking about a particular topic in that language. So one of the interesting things on Twitter that you've noticed very often, which is correlated by what you see as trends, for example, on the uh, left-hand side, is <clears throat> when there is uh, an event happening across the planet. It could be something as a sports event, something as, you know, as uh, popular as a sports event. It could be a political event. For example, you know, most of the political conversations, whether that's the uh, US election, which is coming up, or the uh, elections or the Greek debates that are happening in Europe, or the uh, Nepal earthquake that just occurred in Nepal, um, you'd be amazed by how much conversation happens on Twitter real time. And <clears throat> when I'm interested in a particular topic, I have found you know, folks, and me included, going and searching for that specific hashtag in a particular language to get the most recent information that people are sharing. Because at the end of the day, crowdsourced information where people are actually conversing with each other or sharing information can only occur spontaneously on platforms such as these, right? And Twitter is one of them. So, I went and looked up, for example, you'll see that the interface is in uh, English here, but I was searching on Hindi uh, and Nepali, which, has, which share the same script, which is Devanagari, but I was looking at Nepal Bhukamp, which basically means Nepal's earthquake, right? And I could see <coughs> all the different you know, conversations and the information that was getting shared as the earthquake occurred and then the discussions in terms of getting relief down to the ground, uh, the, you know, the uh, people who are stuck in different areas due to landslides or due to any, any kind of you know, building collapses. And you'd be amazed at how late uh, the actual you know, the traditional media picked it up after it is on Wikipedia or on Twitter or on Facebook and other platforms, right? So getting a snapshot in each one of these tweets, which is you can see in Nepali, for example, uh, some of the hashtags are in, in Hindi. Some of the um, you know, information being shared is in English. This is all a mixture of some of the areas that are you know, coming and uh, uh, basically merging in um, as a tweet, right? So I just wanted to show you the complexity. When you talk about access, it's not as simple as you know, just giving somebody internet access, right? There is a lot of levels of access. Uh, and support that you need to build into a platform to be able to actually say that, hey, you know, 
my platform, my website, my service can actually speak and handle the language that users are using. So as you know, um, Twitter is um, supporting literally hundreds of languages. And uh, officially, we support uh, 36 localized languages, but that's different from content languages, right? Again, people tweet in far more, many hundreds of languages, you know, across the planet, but it's not, and it's, it's a higher number than what is officially localized by Twitter, right? So um, when you talk about providing language support, as you all know, um, an intuitive user experience means that the same user experience, which is a good user experience, hopefully, is available not only in English, but in other languages that you're using, right? That is the, the uh, interaction that you have with the platform should not degrade based on the language that you're using. So when you go and set your language, you know, for, hey, I speak in, I use Twitter in German, for example, should be able to see German, but my, uh, again, my interaction with the platform should be the same should not be different from English. So there are a lot of aspects in user experience which I term, you know, localization is just a very small tip of the iceberg on. It really is just a very small part. But nonetheless, an important part and needs to be something that, you know, people are comfortable with and can actually use the terminology and see the terminology that they are used to. So how many of you are familiar with localization and localization tools? Cool. So you know, for example, you know, when you're actually working with translators, you know, whether they're vendor communities or actual user communities, localization terminology, for example, is something where a lot of variance exists, right? And UI localization becomes far more complex than what it should be based on the terminology that is being, uh, you know, added to a user interface for a particular language, but also context driven. So I'll go a little bit more into that over, you know, how we handle it at Twitter. Um, but then there's also internationalization in terms of the areas of pluralization, gender support, grammar support, you know, what are we inherently presenting back to the user so that it doesn't sound incorrect, right? And at the same time, there's language selection. That is, hey, can I select multiple languages for, you know, maybe I want to see my UI in a particular language. Maybe I want to see content in this uh, different language. Maybe I want to see, uh, you know, different, uh, multiple different languages for content. It could be a different variance altogether. So the, having that flexibility, having the flexibility to be able to input your tweet, to be able to tweet. Um, providing a consistent reading experience, you'd be amazed by the variation that exists in the uh, user experience when you are actually rendering multi-language tweets, because you could have Korean with English, for example, and if you did have Korean or Chinese or Japanese characters, they could be actually, because they're blocks, right? At the end of the day, they could look very different in the user experience than English itself, and it could be it could be totally a blocky experience. So how do you actually provide a better user experience for that? And in a mixed language world, especially the world that we live in today, um, that is something which is very important. These are different aspects of providing a good design experience, you know, where it's not only a software engineering problem, but it's also a design problem uh, that we need to address is very important. And then last but not least, providing relevance in all the parts that we do on the web, which is search, trends, uh, going and locating and discovering information uh, across the different content sources that we have, where NLP and language processing matters hugely. So I'll, I'll deep dive a little bit into that, and then I would like to have some questions you know, to discuss some of the areas uh, deeply. So I'll start off with localization. Um, what Twitter has done over time is that Twitter does have a translate.twitter.com, which is a web service that has been built uh, over the past few years, where uh, it is for any community member, whether they're vendor community members or language user communities, to be able to you know, go and contribute translations for their languages. And 
As I said earlier, officially we support 36 languages in terms of full coverage of all the products that Twitter has, but we are actually looking at expanding and rolling out more and more languages pretty fast. I mean, um, that's again, I come from a world at Wikipedia where we had almost 300 languages, the 36 sounds very few to me. So, <laughs> so it's just something that you know, I want to uh, uh, help enable uh, where there is actually for a full localization in that area. But you can only scale using tools and using technology. It is difficult to actually scale at that level you know, where you can actually support hundreds and hundreds of languages without the tools that you built. So, Translate.twitter.com, I'd urge you to go and check it out, give me feedback. We are doing a fair bit of work in terms of the design and actually improving the workflow and making it simpler. Uh, and also rolling out a um, mobile app uh, where translators can actually contribute very easily through mobile, uh, their mobile devices. So having that available in the user experience where you'd be amazed how many people actually contribute, you know, that hey, I just you know, know these two languages, can I actually go and do that as I'm taking a bus ride? You'd just be amazed at how many people do that across the planet. So uh, that is the web-based interface and we, have, we are going to have a mobile app on that also. Um, and some of the other localization best practices that I wanted to kind of highlight is that as we look at localization, some of the best practices that we keep in mind for Twitter, especially is that we are uh, try to be very functionally accurate in terms of taking some of the internationalization guidelines for different languages in terms of pluralization rules, grammar rules, uh, gender rules, string concatenation rules, and incorporate that and make sure that localization that is being uh, you know, made available is compliant with that. The other area, which is always you know, something that is work in progress for every major platform, is uh, being error-free, which means tracking and correcting translations all the time. Because you'd be amazed at you know, how folks can submit translations, for example, uh, but may not have the context at all. So it might be completely a different word depending on what the context was, right? And so having mistranslations, misspellings, punctuation errors, or punctuation, you know, uh, anomalies is something that you have to consistently keep correcting as you go along in localization. And of course, preserving context, which is one of the toughest problems in localization. Uh, because again, you'd be amazed by how, uh, as you look at non-Latin language scripts especially, um, and languages, you'd be amazed at how much context matters, right? Where we take for granted that, hey, in, in English, we know exactly the context because we're using it all the time, right? And we can just uh, kind of just interpret it that way. But if you're looking at it in Japanese, or if you're looking at it in Arabic, or you're looking at it in Hindi, the context matters enormously because you might actually use a completely different word <coughs> or a phrase depending on where that uh, phrase is being used, right? So again, these are some guidelines that are actually very useful to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> so another area that I wanted to highlight where we are doing a lot of deep work in, and um, uh, again, I'd like to do more question and answers if you have any questions on this later, is that um, we use natural language processing algorithms and uh, have been writing uh, and, and building a lot of uh, libraries, if you will, uh, to be able to actually understand <coughs> and process tweets in different languages. And especially when you're talking about uh, multi-language tweets, where you, know, you have different languages being mushed into, mingled into the same context, how do you actually understand a tweet accurately? What is the language? Are you identifying all the languages correctly? Because you'd be amazed at how complex a problem that is. Um, and actually identifying the right languages uh, for each of those parts where you can understand and process the tweet accurately. So, you know, NLP is very useful in actually being able to process and understand um, a phrase or a sentence or a paragraph in context. Um, 
leading from that, when you process and understand tweets, obviously you want to know how relevant it is to a particular topic, right? And then a hash, which was a hashtag, you know, as invented by Twitter, where you can actually designate a topic, you know, with a hashtag, which is usually used for search, uh, is something where you need to improve relevance. That is, hey, I'm looking for baseball, for example, and I'm interested in a specific game that's going on this coming weekend. When I go and do and you know just a hash baseball as a search, perhaps that's not what I'm looking for. And this is the same problem that every search you know mechanism on the web is addressing in different ways. Is that how do I actually provide relevant information back to you? And in this case, relevant tweets. So can I surface relevant sources? You know, with hey, these are suggestions. Uh, of you know, these games that are coming up this weekend. Um, can I provide the right uh, you know, tweets that are related to that? How do I understand that? If I'm searching for it in a different language, say I'm looking at the Japanese baseball teams who are participating, can I actually you know, provide you that information accurately and provide relevance in that? Um, and how do I improve the trends? You know, people are looking at rankings all the time. What is the ranking of that particular team? Can I find that more accurately? So you'd be amazed at how much NLP helps on the back end in terms of language processing and being able to dissect the meaning and context of a word or a phrase or a sentence or a paragraph as you're looking at it in detail. Um, another area that we use <coughs> NLP for, again, is uh, how many of you use emoji on the web? But all of you guys do. You've looked at it, at least I know. So uh, as you know, it, the Unicode uh, committee has just passed uh, emoji as uh, in the standard. It was something that, again, uh, as you know, if any of you are familiar with the history, uh, evolved from the Japan uh, telcos and carriers because uh, you know they rolled out these uh, fun uh, icon sets in the devices uh, in Japan uh, over the last few decades. And then that has come into the language standards, if you will, of being able to be pervasive on the web today. So emojis is something that is happening because as the world of the web becomes more and more visual and interactive, people use these hashtags all the time. And you'd be amazed in Twitter's world, for example, say when the um, you know, Brazil World, World Cup was going on, right? Each team has a hash flag, and the hash flags are all flags of the different countries of the teams that they're playing. So you'd be amazed at the tweets that, you know, show up because you're like, all these flags with, you know, numbers which are being tweeted, like literally millions of tweets, you know, every minute where you have all these hash flags going across which are icons and which are emojis. And, um, and this happens very frequently. You'd be amazed, like there was a very cool example when the Star Wars movie got released uh, recently. Uh, you know, again, the, um, the uh, movie company that released it, I think it was a Disney or uh, was it Pixar? It was a Disney? Disney, right? So they actually requested Twitter to uh, for specific characters in emoji that they could use in their hash flags for, you know, kind of rolling out and announcing the movie. And it was really amazing because you could see R2-T2 and all these different, you know, characters from the Star Wars, you know, in the hash flags across Twitter. And um, again, you know, emoji and hashtags are very popular. As time goes by, they'll probably, you know, keep continuing to get embedded in the mobile devices that we are all using and we, you know, we use smileys all the time, but we are using so many other, uh, you know, characters also. So that is, again, something that an algorithm needs to understand. I mean, what are you talking about when you're using an icon now instead of even phrases and text? And how do you actually understand context in that, right? What does that mean? So, um, again, you know, that's something also that is rolling in as we build out you know, more uh, learning about the uh, characters that we encounter in everybody's conversations. 
and at the same time the languages that we are supporting. So much of the, uh, the work that we are doing right now is in uh, understanding CJK, which is Japanese, uh, Korean, Chinese, uh, RTL, uh, which is Arabic, uh, Persian, Hebrew, different languages, and of course, Indian languages, which are the Indic languages coming in. Because again, these are you know, a, a very complex languages and um, really understanding and providing relevant results is something which is a more, far more complex uh, problem to solve computationally than you know, uh, English and Latin uh, based languages which are much better supported, if you will. So, <clears throat> having said that, I'll um, segue into one of my favorite areas which is uh, open source and the open web. And um, that's one of the areas that I deeply care about in terms of, uh, you know, again, contributing to open source. So Twitter contributes very heavily to open source, especially uh, not only on general open source, you know, technology projects like uh, Mesos, which is an Apache project, Finical, Pants, uh, Scalding, which is a test framework. Again, lots of different projects that Twitter contributes to. Um, and again, I have put in the URLs. You can take a photograph or you know, I'll share the slides in terms of you being able to use this as a reference. But go check out uh, all the code uh, repositories are openly licensed and available on GitHub. And uh, you know, the, if you're interested in any of these areas, you can always ping me or ping you know, Chris, who is handle I have attached there uh, and listed there and check out all the open source programs and projects that we are very deeply involved in because we really, really contribute enormously into the different technology projects. We have literally hundreds of engineers who, you know, again, participate on different projects and contribute based on their interests and based on, you know, the projects they're working on. Um, and, and that then, you know, deep diving into language libraries. We do an enormous amount of work in terms of not only trying to make sure that the work that we are doing is open sourceable, uh, in terms of the libraries that we are building, can we actually release some of the data as well as the libraries that, of, uh, uh, that we are building for natural language processing or CLDR, uh, data input in and making that available. And, and these are examples, again, we have several libraries, we uh, language libraries which are available, which uh, are actually used by other sites also. Again, the Twitter Korean text, that's actually NLP, it's an NLP project where you can actually look at how uh, you can extract Korean text and be able to process it for, you know, different um, um, text processing projects that you're doing. Uh, Twitter CLDR is basically one of our projects for uh, contributing different languages back into the CLDR as it is used in Twitter. Uh, we have different versions that we maintain in Ruby, in Java, in JavaScript. Uh, again, depending on the languages you're using, feel free to uh, go and browse. Um, and then we have Emoji, which is something that is very interesting as it evolves, uh, where Twitter released in 2014, and library of emoji icons, which were designed by Twitter designers. And that was kind of the initial uh, attempt as we saw so much emoji being used even on Twitter to make available uh, in the way that it is used. Um, it is open source, you can reuse it easily. Um, and also, uh, there is an emoji library if you can uh, go into github.io, which is actually available, which you can reuse also. So again, this is just a snapshot of some of the projects that uh, you know, t Twitter is deeply involved in. We do participate very actively on Unicode and the W3C and uh, uh, different uh, standards bodies in terms of actually uh, getting more, um, uh, you know, again, first of all, providing user feedback, if you will, because we come from a user uh, content generated world, right? And providing that back into the standards uh, committees as feedback because that helps then having the standard being more in sync with what the actual use cases are on the web. And at the same time also contributing some of our deeper language work that we are doing in NLP, in internationalization, in localization back into the standards. So. Again, hopefully that gives you a snapshot of some of the work that we are doing. 
Of course, uh, let's have some questions. Uh, again, for those of you who can use it, read these languages. I challenge you to read them. And, uh, uh, and of course, I'm hiring. So um, I am uh, actually um, in the process of um, hiring a fair, a fair number of engineers and product managers for uh, working on uh, language engineering, uh, internationalization, localization, NLP, machine learning. Uh, if you're interested, you know where to find me on Twitter, at Alolita, as well as, you know, if you have any questions, love to uh, hear about them. All right, so thank you again. <laughs>